Let's create a space shooter game from scratch at popfly.com. To try out the final game or make your own edits, log in and select space shooter from this list. I'm going to start from scratch, however, and I'll begin by searching for some actors for my game. Let's find some spaceships, and then I'll go to the scenes area where I can add a background to my game. I'll choose an appropriate background to make it look like we're in space. And with that in place, let's add some spaceships. I'll make three rows of four bad guys along the top. And for the user-controlled spaceship, I'll place this orange one at the bottom. That does it for the layout of the game. Let's add some behaviors to these actors. I want the green spaceships to move, so let's add a motion behavior. And we can quickly try out moving to the right. And that's fine, but what I actually want to happen is for them to move back and forth. So for a second and a half, I'll have them move to the right, reverse when they're done, and repeat that forever. Now for the orange spaceship, I want it to be able to move left and right. So I'll give it two motion behaviors, one to move right for the duration of the event, and I'll choose that event in a second, and one to move left for the duration of the event. Now unlike the previous motion that was triggered by the load event, I want the user to do this with a keyboard. So I'll say the right arrow key should make the spaceship move right while it's down, and the left arrow key should move the spaceship to the left while the key is down. That does it for the motion. Let's add a shoot behavior. So I can choose any actor to shoot. There happens to be a category of projectiles here. And while we're at it, let's choose a sound effect appropriate for this shooting behavior. That sounds nice. So with that, let's add a motion to the shooting. Now that's a bit slow, so let's make it faster. And I'm happy with that. Now let's choose an event other than the load event. Let's make the spacebar shoot the bullet, but I don't want a continuous stream while the spacebar is held down, so let's change it to be once per press. And that does it for the orange spaceship. Now we just need to add a corresponding shoot behavior to the green spaceship. So let's add the behavior, and for the event, let's make them shoot a bit randomly at a timed interval. So every spaceship will shoot between 1 and 9 seconds, and I'll choose a different projectile for it to shoot. And let's give it a downward motion at a speed of 300. I'm happy with these settings, but if you look at the preview, the bad guy's bullets are not only killing me, but their own kind as well. So let's see what's going on. When I chose those projectiles, they were added to my game as normal actors, but with an extra behavior. This behavior makes the bullet and anything it collides with disappear. So let's change the details of this collision event and say that we only care about collisions with the orange spaceship. Now the basic mechanics of my game are done, so let's play it. I can move back and forth, I can shoot, and the bullet got me. So let me save this, but then I want to add some basic win-loss conditions to make the game complete. By default, games already have won and lost scenes, so I just need to figure out when do I transition to these scenes. So when should I lose? I should lose when the orange spaceship disappears. So I can add a scene change behavior, tell it to go to the lost scene, and for the event that triggers it, I can use this actor's disappear event. That was pretty simple, but the win condition is more complex. I should win when all the green spaceships on the main scene are gone. So I'm going to add a scene change behavior, this time to the one scene. And for the event to trigger it, I'm going to choose a property change event. All actors have properties, scenes have properties, the game has properties, and you can add your own. Here from the list, we can see a dynamic property. The number of smooth spaceships is what I care about on the scene. And when it equals zero, that's when I should trigger the scene change behavior. Now while I'm in here making it more fancy, let's do one more thing. Let's go to the bullets I'm shooting and add a special effect to its disappear behavior. Here I can choose from some special effect actors pre-configured to provide a nice uh, animation. And since I chose an explosion, let's find a nice sound effect for that. Okay, with the massive explosion, let's play this new game. And there you can see the lose condition working correctly. So 
So let's customize this even further with some coding. We can go to any behavior, see the JavaScript code corresponding to that behavior, and change it. So here's the back and forth motion of the green spaceships. There's a bit of code there, but let me just delete a bunch of it to simplify it. And instead, I'm going to keep setting the x acceleration of the green spaceships to a random number. So I'll use math.random, multiply it by 100, and I'll apply that to both the x and y directions. I can quickly see the results of any code I write, and here I can see the spaceships are drifting down and to the right since math.random is returning a number between 0 and 1. So I'll subtract negative 0.5 from the result of math.random, and this should give me a nice jittering behavior that I was looking for. Now even though I did this completely custom code that I'll save to this behavior, I can still add additional behaviors and everything will compose beautifully. So here's a second motion behavior to the green spaceships that'll make them oscillate up and down forever. If I preview that, I can see they're doing the oscillation and yet they're still doing that random jittering. I could do a more advanced movement like always move toward the mouse, and here we can see the random jittering plus the movement toward the mouse. So you can keep having fun with customizations, and like all PopFly projects, you can share them with your friends, whether it's on Facebook, Windows Live Spaces, an iframe in your blog, a simple email link, or more. So to demonstrate this, let me download my game as a Windows Vista sidebar gadget, and once I install it, I'll drag it onto the screen so you can see how to play your game in this small form factor.